In Pennsylvania's Pocono Mountains, Katherine Johnson and her colleagues gather around a television set to watch Neil Armstrong walk on the moon. It's a moment that has the world watching, but Johnson has a special connection to the mission. Despite the prejudices of the day, she's overcome discrimination to become a vital part of NASA, and her brilliant mind has sent men to the stars on many occasions. Catherine was born on August 26, 1918 in White Sulphur Springs, a popular resort city in Greenbrier County, West Virginia. Her mother, Joy Lett, worked as a teacher while her father, Joshua, was employed by the Grand Greenbrier Hotel. At the time, segregation was still in force in the state and prejudices against African Americans were strong. Nonetheless, Joshua always tried to instill a sense of worth in his four children, and even though it wasn't possible for African American pupils to study past the eighth grade in Greenbrier County, Catherine and her siblings began attending school in a neighboring area. By that time, the young girl had begun to exhibit a remarkable talent for math. At just 14 years of age, in fact, Catherine left high school and enrolled at West Virginia State. There, her aptitude for numbers continued to impress her tutors, who even created new courses to challenge her developing mind. Over the course of four years, she earned degrees in mathematics and French, graduating when she was 18. Initially, Catherine began working as a teacher, although she soon left to attend West Virginia University's graduate school. This was during segregation, however, and the institution had never welcomed African Americans before. But due to her exceptional talent, Catherine was one of only three black students chosen to integrate the school. By this time, Catherine was married, and after only a year of graduate school, she quit in order to raise a family. However, in 1952, she found out that the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, the precursor to NASA, was looking to hire mathematicians, and the following year, she joined the team. At the time, Catherine was placed in a pool of women tasked with analyzing data from airplane flights. But after a few weeks, she was given a temporary assignment doing research, the only woman in a group of men. And her skills with geometry came in so handy that her position became a permanent one. According to Catherine, her gender and race certainly presented problems. Nonetheless, she chose not to let them stand in her way. For instance, she apparently insisted on being included in important meetings despite the fact that they were typically only attended by men. Convinced that she belonged, Catherine refused to let others' prejudices prevent her from succeeding. But despite Catherine's determination, discrimination was still rife at NACA. In fact, she and her African-American colleagues were forced to use separate facilities, working in an office titled Colored Computers. And for five years, Catherine labored under these conditions, manually completing arduous calculations without the aid of digital technology. Then in 1958, the organization became NASA and its African-American employees were finally integrated with their white peers. However, Catherine still faced discrimination as a woman wanting to have her voice heard. At the time, female researchers were even banned from putting their names on official reports, although Catherine was eventually able to break that rule too. Under NASA, Catherine became an aerospace technologist tasked with making the complicated calculations necessary to enable spaceflight. And in 1961, she played an important role in sending the first Americans into space. In fact, when astronaut Alan Shepard set off on the Freedom 7 mission, it was Catherine who calculated the trajectory more than 100 miles into the atmosphere and safely back to Earth. That same year, Catherine was also responsible for determining the launch window for another of Shepard's missions. And that wasn't all. She worked with NASA to create navigational charts for astronauts as well providing them with a way of returning to Earth in the event of any electronic problems. Soon, Catherine had developed a strong reputation with NASA's astronauts. In fact, when John Glenn was preparing to launch a later mission into Earth's orbit, he insisted that Catherine double-check the calculations, which had been performed by a computer for the first time. Apparently, he refused to launch until she had personally approved the numbers. As computers became more commonplace at NASA, Catherine was often called upon to verify the calculations of this emerging technology. And in 1969, she helped launch another of NASA's milestones, determining the trajectory for Apollo 11. Watching from the Poconos Mountains, she witnessed the success of her work as Neil Armstrong took his first steps on the moon. The following year, Catherine's work was in the spotlight once more during NASA's ill-fated Apollo 13 mission. 
when an exploding oxygen tank forced the astronauts to abort their mission her calculations helped the crew to land safely back on earth Everybody was concerned with getting them there, she said, according to BusinessInsider.com. We were concerned with getting them back. And as NASA's dreams went beyond the moon and even further into the stars, Catherine was there to help it succeed. Over the course of her career, she was involved in the space shuttle program, as well as helping to prepare for a future mission to Mars. She also co-wrote almost 30 scientific reports before retiring in 1986. To Catherine, her confidence in her abilities was always the key to her success. We needed to be assertive as women in those days, assertive and aggressive, she's quoted as saying, in black woman scientists in the United States. And the degree to which you had to be that way depended on where you were. I had to be. Today, Catherine is remembered as a pioneer in the fields of both science and human rights. In 1999, she was named Outstanding Alumnus of the Year by West Virginia State University. And in 2015, she received a very special honor from Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States. That year, she was presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest award that civilians can receive in the United States. The following year, a NASA research facility in Virginia was named after her, and she also received a Snoopy Award for outstanding contributions to the agency's successes. Then, in December 2016, the critically acclaimed movie Hidden Figures was released, immortalizing the women of NASA history and film. And when the movie stars took to the stage of the Oscar ceremony the following year, they invited the 98-year-old Catherine to join them. To her delight, she was given a standing ovation. 